Hello everybody. Uh, today will be the third session for uh, what we started before uh, for the ADC practical um, exam tasks. So um, I did two sessions before, uh, one for the, the, the crown preps and one, the, the PFM and full gold crown and the other one was for cavity preparations um, the composite cavity preparation class 2 and class 3 uh, so please check uh, my uh, page ADC pass uh, for the previous uh, videos so today we'll, we'll be discussing the the endo, the endo access um, cavity prep uh, it's one of the practical exam talks um, so I will be soon sharing uh, my presentation and um, you are welcome to um, to comment or uh, like or share the video if you would like to tag someone that uh, you think that need to see the video so um, go ahead and tag tag whatever you like and uh, you can also share and comment and please let me know at any stage if if my voice is not clear okay I'm just trying to check um, the presentation Okay, um, appro approximate, uh, approximately will take one hour for today's um, session. It should be, um, I will go through the, the task first and then... I will go through the task first and then uh, we'll... Um, will actually uh, will actually give some uh, space uh, some some amount of time at the end of the session today for um, for the questions so uh, yeah if you have any questions please also uh, put it in the comments okay just a second will be starting soon okay so for the for the endodontic um, access prep task um, it's one of the tasks that might come in day one or day two. I will go through the presentation right now. So uh, for the task overview, the recommended time for this task is uh, from 45 minutes to one hour. Um, endodontic access task was usually coming in previous exams on endosimulated teeth, um, which you can buy it from <clears throat> one dental in Australia. Uh, either on teeth, it was coming on teeth 1.6 or 2.6. These teeth actually have a pulp chamber and root canals with red stained material, which can be removed. So these are the pictures for, for the teeth. So the right picture is actually uh, samples of the teeth, and the left one is... Um, Actually, uh, I took a cross section into the tooth to show you uh, the positions of the canals. So usually it have three canals, uh, mesobuccal, distobuccal, and palatal. And usually, as, as you can see on, on that picture, that the mesobuccal is usually uh, positioned uh, more buccal in, compared to the distobuccal. It's more toward the buccal wall. 
Okay, so the distal buccal literally is more close to the palatal canal. Okay, uh, for the next slide, actually the handbook mentioned three criteria to be assessed in this task. Um, I think because the criteria in this task is not very, very clear uh, in, in the ADC handbook, I just will try to simplify it. Um, so the, the, the mentioned three, three things, uh, external form, internal form, and finish. For the external form, uh, they mentioned um, optimal outline form to provide appropriate removal of pod bones and allow access to all canals. I have all the important points. I put it in the next slides. So this, this is taken from the ADC handbook. And um, these are the three categories that, that they... Uh, they actually do assessment um, in, in regards to these three uh, categories. So for the external form, they mention optimal outline form to provide appropriate removal of pulp horns and allow access to all canals. B, optimal removal of unsupported tooth structure and removal of all the pulp chamber roof. C, appropriate shape and position of the axis cavity. So you know that the, the, the axis cavity usually for upper six should be a uh, triangle in shape. So you should keep that triangle. However, it's not necessarily to be uh, like sharp triangle. So it, can, it should have actually rounded line angles, but the shape of the triangle should be there. Um, also, you should remove all the unsupported tooth structure and make sure that there is no pulp chamber roof at all. Um, and all these actually factors are allowing to get like straight line access to all the canals. We'll come through some pictures uh, later on on this presentation to uh, just make sure that you understand it well. Uh, second category is the internal form. For the internal form, form, they mentioned optimal internal form to allow straight line access to all canals. B, optimal tapered preparation walls. Optimally tapered preparation walls. So the walls ideally should be straight. Um, sometimes it can be convergent, slightly convergent, especially toward the palatal canal, uh, but it shouldn't be divergent at all because divergent will be over tapered uh, over tapered walls and it will go to borderline or even unsatisfactory and uh, last point in, in last important point in the internal form that you shouldn't do any gouging of walls gouging means that it's like a groove into the walls so if you apply the bear with angle toward uh, angled bur toward the wall, it might leave like a groove in into the wall. So if if that happens, this is this this means that it's gouging, and you have to actually correct it if 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 it can be corrected. Um, otherwise, it might go to um, also uh, unfortunately to borderline or unsatisfactory. For the last um, category in, uh, in the criteria is the finish. So you should have smooth walls and cable surface. The cable surface is actually the, the, the junction between the external tooth surface, the top surface of the tooth, which is actually the occlusal surface, and your, uh, the, the wall inside the access cavity. So that, that cable surface should be smooth. Not necessarily, uh, or it's not needed actually to bevel it, so no need to bevel it at all, but just make sure that when you keep, when you do uh, the cutting, that you keep the bear parallel to the wall, so you don't do either um, like getting undermined enamel on the surface or uh, getting um, like divergent 
walls at the cable surface margin. Um, second point, no debris should be left on walls of the access cavity because if there is any debris left, it will be considered either borderline or unsatisfactory. It depends on how much debris are there. So we'll go through some guidelines um, like step by step with some pictures. So because I'm, I'm, I'm getting many questions about what bears to be used in this task, um, again, it's actually personal preference. So I prefer specific bears to work with. I find it more easier to work with these bears and getting good results. But it is, it's totally up to you if you find that the bears that you are using is better than these ones. Uh, just stick to uh, what you are used to uh, use. So uh, I first use endo access bear uh, to do um, actually the point of entry. Uh, just we'll go through the list and then we'll show you the pictures. So first bear is endo access bear. However, it's if you didn't find it, uh, you can use round bear. Um, second one diamond tapered bear, blue or green band in high or slow speed. Third one diamond tapered bear, red or yellow band. This one would be for finishing, high or slow speed as well. And last one is tapered chufu white bear. Um, this one I prefer in slow speed. Um, was using before uh, something like Endo Z, but I find it actually uh, very aggressive. So I usually try to keep using only diamond bears for this task because um, I found that um, the carbide bears are aggressive and it doesn't actually give a good finish. And it's, it's very important to have like a very good finish of the walls in this task. So I tried, I tried to stick only for, uh, to uh, the diamond bears. We'll show you pictures of these bears. So uh, these are the pictures. Number one is the endo access bear. So it's like a tapered bear with a ball end. Um, you can, if you, don't, if you didn't find that, you can use any uh, round bear, round carbide or... Um, carbide or diamond it's it's actually also up to you um, but um, yeah so number one is uh, in the access bear number two tapered diamond uh, bear I put it on slow speed adapter but if you can find it in find tapered diamond bear in slow speed that would be better three number three is diamond tapered bear red band this one I use it for finishing so three and four I use them for finishing. Uh, four is a Shufu Dura White Tapered Bear. So we'll go through some uh, actually steps. So first thing that you need to start the access point of entry at the central pit with the bear directed misu palatally because at this point where actually the probe is located is the actually you should find the biggest part of um, the pulp chamber. So uh, going into the palatal, misu palatally, is actually is a good point to start from uh, to avoid actually getting overextension. Um, Sergio was asking for the number uh, the bear number one, which is endo axis. Yeah, endo axis actually comes on different comes on different actually sizes. I'm not sure, unfortunately, I'm not sure what size is this one, but I prefer using a small size as, as much as, as possible. Not sure if it is the, it's not the first, this is not the smallest one, uh, but use, if you can get two, for example, the smallest and just the one next to it would be better. Um, Okay, so next picture is for the point of entry. So this is where I apply my bear in, 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 uh, in the beginning. So you can either use um, an access, endo access bear or round bear. And once you feel the drop into the pulp chamber, 
you should stop. The drop is usually shallower than in natural teeth. You should find the drop at approximately three millimeters depth. Um, yeah, it's 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 very shallow. So because some candidates go just with with the burr uh, and apply pressure from the beginning and then they end with hitting the floor, and we shouldn't actually touch the floor at all. So try to be take it step by step. So go first like one millimeter depth and stop then another 1 mm and stop and then when you find that you are approximately before 3 millimeters just go slowly until you feel the drop so here in this picture you find that it's already that we uh, we got the drop into the pulp chamber so next step is to extend the access cavity laterally, which we call it axially, toward each canal orifice, keeping the burr away from the floor until you can see full circumference of each canal orifice. Never touch the floor with the burr or with any hand instrument, and you should remove the red material between the canal's orifices if it exists. Sometimes there is a groove in, the, in these teeth running from the mesobuccal toward palatal and another groove from the distobuccal toward palatal. And sometimes this groove is also filled with this red material. And if you find these red materials in between the orifices, you have to actually remove them. So in next picture, I actually extended a little bit from, from the drop that I did. I extended a little bit uh, toward the palatal. And then next picture, I extended a little bit toward the mesobuccal. Then next one, I extended a bit toward this tubuccal. So I'm extending toward the, because I'm, I'm just widening it carefully. I don't want to do over extension so I need to see where are the canals before I do the extension so I'm just extending toward the position of each canal to to actually try to to uh, to see where is uh, where are the canals so even from that from 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 this picture it's it's a, a very small axis yet and I can see part of part of the mesobuccal and part of the distobuccal. So another question saying extension with the same burr. Um, I sometimes do extension with the end access burr just especially in the beginning uh, or around each canal orifice. However, I prefer any diamond tapered burr, the, the burr number two in, in my previous slide. Okay, um, so in next picture, I didn't extend actually on this picture, I didn't extend more than the previous one. I just angled, this is from different angulation. So from different angulation, I can see the full circumference of mesobuccal here. From another angulation, I can see the distobuccal. From third angulation, I can see part of the palatal not the whole palatal okay so then we need to do the roofing of pulp chamber so it's still it is a very small access cavity we need to extend it more so we need actually to do what we call it the roofing you need to extend the access cavity to remove undermine to structure on walls to remove any steps between the access cavity walls and the pulp chamber walls because uh, I will show you that in in, um, in next slides that um, usually the pulp chamber wall uh, the pulp chamber walls are actually smooth and we ideally we shouldn't be touching the pulp chamber walls the pulp chamber walls which already created inside these teeth are already smooth and they are straight 
So usually we shouldn't be working on 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 the pulp chamber walls. We only work on the what we what I call it the internal walls above the pulp chamber walls. I will show you pictures for these um, soon. So here are these arrows pointing to undermine to structure, which this is the the roof of the pulp chamber. This should be removed. So this is on the distal distal wall. Okay. Next one here on the mesial wall. So you can see even from this picture you can see part of the internal pulp chamber wall. The pulp chamber wall there are actually down there is smooth and it doesn't need anything. You just need to modify the one the the, the wall on top of it which is actually the, the roof. You need to remove this roof to make it smooth and to make it on the same level of the pulp chamber wall. So here are some pictures uh, I draw um, just to show you uh, just if we are looking at the tooth from a proximal view from a proximal view mesial or distal so B is buccal P is palatal so um, sorry for bad, bad drawing about the bear so the one on the top is actually a bear so and the one on on the center there is the pulp chamber so you have to when when we put the burr in in the top we uh, we are starting to do the access cavity and next picture is showing that the burr is going down and you are about to open the uh, the access so we are about to reach the pulp chamber and then once you reach it, the pulp chamber, you will find that there will be a roof. So this roof that you can see on, on the right side of the picture is the pulp chamber roof with the red mark. So this is, undermine, this is considered as undermined to structure. So all our work should be on this part of the wall. We shouldn't be extending the, the bear deeper than this level. So you can see that where is the bear is located. So at this level, this should be all our work. We shouldn't be extending the bear down toward the pulp chamber wall because the pulp chamber wall is already straight, is already smooth. It doesn't need anything. We just need to do the deroofing to make the 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 to remove the pulp chamber roof. So the whole wall will be straight. So we'll show you the next picture. This how it should be after we remove uh, the pulp chamber roof. Okay, this point is very important because many candidates actually get confused about what's actually needed from this task. What, how can we approach it? Whether we need to do anything in in, in uh, deep close to the orifices or not but no you shouldn't be doing anything uh, in uh, around the orifices because once you go with that with the bear deeper you do mistakes and you can actually do gouging in the walls you can do injury of the floor you can do overextension so it is as as simple as as it looks here it's not I mean it's not very, I mean, easy to get it done, uh, especially because it is uh, usually upper upper six, and um, the, the the visibility is not very easy. But you have actually to. Uh, I I believe that you need to to work indirectly with the mirror uh, in your practice and in the exam. In 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 the beginning, if you are not good, if you are not very used to do it indirectly, you can do it just for a couple of times during your practice directly until you get the idea about how to do it and then you can um, shift to indirect um, indirect access with the mirror um, another question asking what amount of removal structures 
considered as overextension and not acceptable. So they put some numbers in um, in the criteria, like I'm not sure. Um, they put like 0.5 or one millimeter. So it depends on one millimeter or 0.5. It is from the the internal pulp chamber wall. So if you if you take that pulp chamber wall more if you remove from the pulp chamber wall like 0.5 millimeters it might still be satisfactory more than that it will be um, it will be a borderline I think from until one uh, not sure about the numbers but you can refer to um, the handbook the criteria in the handbook for for the numbers but they usually take the reference is the pulp chamber walls and the position of the orifices. So ideally, we, the, 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 the final axis should be running with the position, the positions of the pulp chamber axis, the pulp, the pulp chamber uh, orifices, sorry. Uh, we'll come through some pictures um, in, in the next visit, uh, sorry, in the next uh, slides. Uh, another question is which length bear UD roof do not have gouging? Uh, I actually I'm not sure what what do you mean by that but uh, I usually use the long one but um, I, I don't actually go deeper so some candidates do like a trek uh, to guide them doing that they put like a mark on the um, they put like a mark on on the burr on like the middle of the burr so when they put it inside the the they know where actually they need to stop so I need to stop actually on the mid surface of the wool I don't need to go more down and usually gouging is not related much to the to the length of the burr it's related to the angulation of the bear. So if you put your bear angled toward the wall, it will cause a groove or gouging into the wall. But if you put it straight parallel to the wall, it won't do any gouging. It might do overextension if you remove much, but it shouldn't do any gouging in, uh, in the walls. I hope that I answered your question. Um, Another question, do you know the extension of internal wall till the chamber wall that we need to de-roof? Uh, yeah, it, you need to get rid of all the roof. So the, there will be no steps between the wall that you created from the axis and the pulp chamber wall. So like here, for example, on this picture, on this picture, um, the one on the left actually is the palatal canal. The one on the right is, I think, it's it's the buccal wall. So, buccal wall on the right, actually, you can see it. It is divergent, which is not actually, um, it's not favorable. So, you shouldn't get divergent wall. And the one on the, on, on the palatal, it is slightly convergent. This is acceptable, especially with, uh, however, it still needs some finishing. Uh, but the palatal, palatal wall can be slightly convergent, but the buccal wall should be straight. You shouldn't have like one convergent wall with the other one is completely parallel to it. It means that one is, uh, one is convergent and the other one is divergent. So next, um, okay guys, because it will be many questions and it will be, uh, sorry, that, that might take time. So I will answer all, all, all the questions later on just after I finish with the presentation, okay? Um, you can type the questions now, but I will answer them uh, later on. Uh, next step, check with end explorer or finger spreader each canal straight line axis. Where the instruments, when the instrument enter easily into each canal orifice without any 
disruption without relying on any part of the cavity walls. So we'll show you some pictures. These pictures are actually before proper de-roofing. And not sure if you can see or not that the 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 instrument that finger spreader is actually very dependent on the wall so it is very on like if if i try to move it it will be sticking to the wall so um, this means that this wall needs to be removed this part of the wall which actually hinders the free movement of the instrument needs to be removed to uh, make sure that you allowed straight line access to each canal orifice. We'll show you pictures with the same finger spreader uh, later on. Finger spreader is usually not something that you can find in the exam venue, uh, but you can use it during your practice for sure. But try to use also the, the endo explorer. Uh, because this one, in the endox prayer, you will find it in the venue and you can use it in, in the exam. Next step, make sure that you can see the full circumference of each canal orifice and make sure of complete de-roofing of the canal orifice by seeing like a crescent area around each canal orifice. Okay, the same as the picture here. This amount of tooth structure around the the orifice is very enough you shouldn't be going more to reveal more than that it is just a very slight amount of tooth structure um, that can be revealed and even sometimes it might be less than that if the instrument actually can go in and out without disruption without depending on any of the walls that would be enough you don't need to do any more extension um, there is a question that i uh, many times i got asked whether we need to see the three canals in one view or not not necessarily to see the three canals in one view but you can see part of each canal in in one view and when you lean the tooth when you change the point of view to check uh, the canals you need to see each canal orifice completely in a separate view after each of the previous steps clean the access cavity with air and water syringe to make sure no debris left on the floor or the canal orifices before you proceed to next step as you may overextend the cavity if you don't see the canal orifices clearly and this is very important for this task because um, this task depends on how we see how we uh, the individual capability of um, uh, fr from from our point of view to see uh, the canal the canals orifices so you need to dry it well after each step clean it and dry it uh, before you do any um, overextension try to preserve the mesial marginal ridge and the oblique ridge as much as you can but put in mind you shouldn't leave any undermined tooth structure they put on the criteria that the mesial marginal ridge should be preserved as as much as as you can because if you don't preserve it might go to borderline or unsatisfactory uh, however the oblique ridge you can actually remove part of it especially if the distubuccal canal is very far toward the distubuccal uh, toward the oblique ridge next step finish the cavity walls with diamond tapered red band finishing burr either red band or yellow band or the Shufu white bear and make sure that the walls are smooth without irregularities or roughness so uh, this is also important you can it depends on how you control the bear and also the speed of the handpiece that you are using whether you are practicing in, 
in a clinic or at home so all these factors uh, actually matters so it will depend whether you will go with slow speed or high speed I usually find that slow speed gives more finish if it is actually not shaking so if you have a good slow speed uh, which is especially at uh, in the in in the clinic um, will give you actually better finish than using high speed because high speed might actually remove from the tooth structure even with the red band it can remove from these teeth um, next step with wet small cotton pellets or micro bond brush dip it in in alcohol swab to just make it wet um, I just like I use alcohol swab and open it open the pack put the without removing the swab I put the, 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 the bond brush inside to make it wet and then I wipe inside the, the access cavity so remove the red material in between the orifices if it exists and clean well the access cavity and make sure no debris left on the floor or the canal orifices so this is some this is a picture of finished access cavity and here here are the pictures to check the straight line axis so you can see the difference now after I did the G roofing and the proper extension that you can see that the the instrument uh, the finger spreader is is not dependent on any wall so if I move it now if I take it up and down or move it even laterally it will move freely so this is what what meant by uh, straight straight line axis when uh, when I put the instrument inside and take it outside it's going in and out freely without actually being hindered by any of the walls of your preparation so this is a finished end axis cavity however there is a small mistake here that it is one of the common mistake that you might have which is actually divergence of one of the walls so this the, the, mesial, the mesial wall here is a little bit divergent how to know from top view whether it is divergent or not if you can see parts of the internal wall from top view this means that your wall is divergent so try to keep it straight if if possible especially the mesial wall because it's 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 uh it's one of the walls that it's very far from our uh, axis uh, because we, we can't actually see it even if you try to work directly you won't be able to see the mesial wall so uh, try when from the beginning when you put the bear uh, try to put the bear parallel to the wall without actually giving uh, without leaning the bear so to avoid getting any diversions on the walls this is the same same one but without without flash so next one is actually a video showing how I do the de-roofing movement so um, I'm not sure if you will be able to see it clearly or not but this is the movement it's like a brushing motion and I don't extend actually my bear uh, I don't extend it to, I, I, you can see only like half of the bear is inside it's not more than that okay thank you for watching and listening um, now we'll answer the questions Give me just a second. Okay. 
I just will go back to um, the questions. So yeah, I think um, last question I didn't answer was how to angle bear as it give more cutting and become diversion toward the cable surface. So I angled um, the bear trying to be parallel to the wall or slightly convergent on the wall. So in this way, I will either get slightly convergence or a straight wall. Um, if roof remained, which bear do you remove it? Do you use yellow band tapered bears? Yeah, so if, if, if there is roof remaining, it depends on how big is it. So if it is big, I will use the, the tapered, tapered diamond bear, which is actually uh, either blue or green band. Number two in the presentation and uh, if it is small just a, a little bit I will use yellow or red band do you hold the bear in a bit angled angulated position from the beginning uh, no yeah I mean the same as what I said so in in, in the beginning after I do the drop uh, when I do the, the extension or work on the walls, I actually try to keep the bear uh, either parallel or giving slightly convergent walls. And even if it's slightly convergent and then you can, while you are finishing, you can straighten it up. Is there any particular measurements for how much the structure needs to be removed around the circumference of the orifices? No, there is not, but at least, I mean, you need to see the whole orifice uh, without over without much of overextension. So, ideally, uh, ideally, it's only the orifice should be seen without much of two structure around it, or just a little bit of two structure. That's why I call it like a crescent area in the presentation. So we shouldn't see the walls. Yeah, we shouldn't see the walls from top view. So from top view, ideally, you shouldn't be seeing the internal walls. If you see the internal walls, this means that you have um, overextend. Uh, sorry, diversions on the walls. Heard that exam tooth have some difference with one dental. Can you explain? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's right. There is a little bit of difference in two things. The first thing that the floor is actually not glossy, like the floor is not transparent floor, like what you have seen here in the presentation. So the floor is also uh, ivory, the same color of the tooth, uh, yellowish white color. Um, the other thing that you might find on that groove running in between the teeth, you might find the red material going through in between the orifices. How to check about remaining roof? This is a good question. Um, you can use a probe or if you know that probe there is an angled, there is a, a small, I just will try to get a picture for that. Because there is um, actually normal probe have like a small end which actually um, which is a little bit bent with this end you can actually use it to put it inside and check if uh, if it has any any catch or not So um, just a second, we'll show you a picture for it. Uh, 
Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I might not be able to do that. Um, but yeah, I will. I actually put in the comments. Say, I'll put the pictures in the comments. So yeah, uh, with 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 that one. Um, you can yeah later on we'll put the picture of that probe so with 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 the with the bend end of uh of the normal probe you can actually check otherwise um you can check with also with the with the endo uh explorer uh run it from the pulp chamber um run it from down from the pulp chamber from the orifice and then go uh, upward toward the surface and see if you feel any catch but i usually also i i also check visually by just ang angulation of my mirror i angle the mirror to see if there is actually any um, like steps on the walls the walls should be smooth and no steps at all between the my uh my access cavity and the internal pulp chamber wall. If we see one internal wall, should we try to correct it? What if and widening it? So this is another question, but I didn't get what you mean by one internal wall. If we see one internal wall, so um, yeah, you mean maybe, yeah, okay, I got that. If, if you see from top view one of the internal walls, you mean? Yeah, it depends on, on actually yeah, the extension. So if, if you can see it partially, if it is, it will be considered as divergent wall. But if it is slightly divergent, that's fine. Because if you try to correct it, actually, it will, it will end with overextension. Because you have to straighten the, the, the wall um the whole wall again so if it is slightly divergent you can see just part of it from top view uh i i i advise i recommend not not to try to correct it uh otherwise you might end with overextension but try from the beginning to avoid getting it divergent yes the same um she, you are saying so we should we should see each orifice only from the opposite angle yeah that's right not necessarily to see all the orifices from top view okay where we lose another question where we lose score more in leaving internal wall visible or wide um, not sure I'm not sure if you leave it visible it will be I think leaving it visible uh, will be better than making it wide because wide will be an overextension however flaring it much will be also considered as in unsatisfactory both are undesirable to be honest but um, not sure which one will go to uh, unsatisfactory first um, no worries okay just guys just five minutes uh, if you have more questions please let me know so how to remove wax from floor mean anastomate don't use anastomate for that you can use the micro bone brush to remove the wax or if you find it difficult you can use the like periprobe any blunt anastomate and only apply it to the that groove area Uh, 
Ok. Ok guys, if you got any questions, please uh, put it in the comments and um, soon I will be answering all of them. Um, another question saying that you mean orifice visible from opposite angle. Yeah, this, this means that um, that when you, uh, when you put when you when you put your mirror to see the orifices you when you check to see the orifices you can see from opposite angles so for example i put my mirror from the palatal to be able to see the mesiobuccal and i put it from buccal to be able to see the palatal orifice okay okay we'll 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 take we'll take these uh last three questions and um i'm sorry you have to stop the video and uh, then we'll answer all any other questions later on uh by replying to the comments so uh, a question from sergio saying during the access do you angle your bear in which position in if if you mean in the pos in in uh from the beginning i i don't i i angle i angle it as i said in the presentation toward the mesio buckle uh, toward the mesio to, sorry toward the mesio palatal part of the the tooth so this is only where i angle it but otherwise i try to be uh, on the walls, I try to be straight or slightly convergent. Yeah, initial axis, yeah, toward the mesio palatal. Um, advice to smooth cable surface. The cable surface, usually I don't do like an extra step to smoothen it, but it comes smooth if I keep the burr parallel to the wall. Are we not allowed to use direct vision in any upper cavity in any task? Yes, ideally you are not allowed to do that. Um, you can do direct vision if you would like on, only to watch, to, to check something, but you shouldn't be working with the bear uh, directly. It should be only indirectly. Can I use bonding agent to make it look nice at the end? Uh, I don't recommend doing that because the bond might stick actually into the into the walls and it might actually uh, like collect some stains. I prefer to use uh, alcohol swab. Uh, so put the bond brush inside the alcohol swab or put like a cotton pellet and then uh, wipe the access cavity if you didn't remove the red material in between the orifices means unsatisfactory I don't think so uh, it might go to borderline Okay, thanks guys um, for watching and listening today. Um, yeah, as I said, I, I will reply to any questions later on in the comments. And I hope that today's video is um, helpful for you. Um, the video will be saved on the page if you would like to watch it uh, later on or if anyone didn't watch it okay and um, we'll see you next um, next month will be for another task on first Tuesday of uh, of January okay see you and good luck in your preparation bye